before we start filling this out, I want us to talk about where we're headed this week. Okay. And is where we're headed is away from using the definition of the derivative to using some shortcuts that come from the definition of the derivative. And by shortcuts, I mean, we're gonna have some formulas and properties of derivatives that are gonna make our lives a lot easier. Okay. And first of all, let's, let's remember some of the ones that we actually already know. If you were to take the derivative of a constant function, we get zero. If we were to take the derivative of f of x equals x, well, its derivative would just be one. If we were to take the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, well, then that is nx to the n minus 1. And then we have derivatives here for sine and cosine. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. Okay. And again, we can use these now for, for the rest of the quarter. Okay. Um, and we're going to come up with more of them. More of these that, that'll make taking derivatives easier. Okay. Let's see one here. So if we have two functions, f and g, that are differentiable at x, so meaning that their derivatives exist at x, and c is a constant, then it's true that the derivative with respect to x of c times f of x is the same thing as c times the derivative with respect to x of f of x. Okay, and all this means is if you have a constant times a function, you can take the derivative of the function first and then just multiply by the constant if you're trying to differentiate c times f of x. Okay. Next, if we have a sum, we can split up that sum. We could rewrite this as the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus the derivative with respect to x of g of x. Okay. And same goes for a difference. If I'm trying to differentiate f of x minus g of x, I can just first take the derivative of f of x. And then we could take the derivative of g of x and just subtract them. All right, and one thing to be careful about is these rules up here, you might have just automatically assumed that we could do these things, okay? But just because it seems like we can do these things doesn't necessarily mean we, we can. And is what I mean is if you have the derivative of a product of functions, it is not going to be just as simple as taking the derivative of one function and multiplying it by the derivative of the other. Okay. That will not be, be the case. Okay. And taking the derivative of a quotient, it's not as simple as just taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator. And we'll actually figure out what the formulas for each one of these cases are. The top one we'll call the product rule, and the bottom one here we'll call the quotient rule. Example one, suppose that the height in meters of a particle after t seconds is given by s of t equals 2t to the fifth minus 9 sine of t plus 1. What is the velocity of the particle when t equals pi seconds? So the first thing that we need to do is just remember that if we're looking for the velocity, that's just the derivative of our displacement function or our position function or height function. All right. And now, thanks to all these new properties up above, actually thanks to all three of them, we'll be able to take this derivative without using the limit definition of the derivative. And also, 
I'm going to have some extra steps in here that I actually won't normally write. So this problem or this derivative that we're going to take normally is going to go um, a lot faster than it's going to go here in this example. Okay. So I'm just going to write down the derivative of 2t to the fifth minus 9 sine of t plus 1. Next, we're going to split this up. So this is going to look like d dt of 2t to the fifth minus 9 sine of t plus d dt of 1. Now, know all we've done so far is we use the second rule. We split up addition. And we can also split up the subtraction of two functions, or the difference of two functions. So this turns into d dt of 2t to the fifth minus d dt of 9 sine of t plus d dt of 1. And we can actually use another property. One of our properties was if you have the derivative of a constant times a function, you can just rewrite it as that constant times the derivative of the function. And so we'll just be able to use the power rule on that t to the fifth. And here I can rewrite this as 9 times d dt of sine of t. So I'll just find the derivative of sine of t and multiply it by minus 9, and then plus d dt of 1. Okay. Now, in our brains, we will normally jump right from the beginning to thinking about the problem already in this fashion here. So your actual first step might actually look like 2 times 5t to the fourth minus 9 times the derivative of sine of t, which is cosine of t, and then plus the derivative of 1, which is 0. Okay. So normally we'll, we'll actually skip out on pretty much everything above and jump right to here. Okay. And we can go a little bit further, right? 2 times 5, that gives us 10. So we have 10t to the fourth minus 9 cosine of t. And uh, from here, we're actually not quite done. We don't have a lot of space left, but we're not going to need much more. The last thing that we wanted to do here was to plug pi into our derivative to, to find the velocity. And so I don't want that prime there. So v of pi is just 10 times pi to the fourth minus 9 times cosine of pi, which is equal to 10 pi to the 4. And then cosine of pi is negative 1, so this is plus 9. And if we wanted to include units, right, the units of our output are being measured in meters. And the input is being measured in, if we look back up here, seconds. So when t equals pi seconds, the velocity of this particle is 10 pi to the fourth plus 9 meters per second. Maybe I'll get rid of that S right there. There we go. Now it's meters per second. 